This bird's population has been declining steadily since the mid-1900s. On this episode of Animal Analysis, Cardolina canadiensis, the Canada Warbler. Originally thought to be a flycatcher due to its habit of catching insects midair, the Canada Warbler population is declining and is now 62% less than it was in 1966. This decline does not have one main factor, with threats such as window collisions, loss of breeding habitat, and the destruction of its wintering grounds all contributing. The Canada Warbler breeds in Canada and the Northeast United States, migrating to Northern South America to areas such as Colombia, Peru, and Panama during the non-breeding season, as seen on this map. Unlike other warblers, such as the Tennessee, the Cape May, the Nashville, and Connecticut, Canada warblers actually live and breed in the locale they're named after, instead of just migrating through, with 80% of the breeding population being located in Canada. The Canada warbler's main prey is insects and spiders, that the gathers them through foliage gleaming and fly-catching mainly, lower in the trees. They even have more distinct whiskers around the beak, like the flycatchers do. You can also notice those on the American Red Star. These whiskers are suggested to protect the eyes from missed insects while flycatching. Canada warblers breed in cool, mixed forests with dense canopy cover, as well as cool, low-lying bogs. The decline of their preferred habitats is likely one of the main factors causing their decline. Canada warblers arrive in late May to early June, and quickly pair, with the male singing this song. The pair will then begin to construct a nest, on or near the ground. Individuals will often return to the same successful site the following year, and may even pair with the same mate. They also depart the breeding grounds early, from mid-July to early August. One pair I was observing this season was gone by the 25th of July. Adults show little variation between the basic, non-breeding, and alternate breeding plumages, with the alternate just being a bit brighter. Males have a slate gray back, crown, and wings, with a yellow chest, a solid white eye ring, and a black pattern the necklace and a facial pattern, as you can see here. Females look pretty similar to the males, just a bit duller, with the black pattern being replaced by a duller gray. The male is unmistakable for other species, but the female could be confused with other non-breeding warblers. Make sure to look for the upper gray parts, a white eye ring, and the characteristic necklace pattern. This species is a passerin belonging to the family Perulidae, the wood warblers, which belongs to the Emberizoidea, the nine primary Ossians, within which Perulidae is suggested to be sister to the Icteridae, the New World blackbirds. Within Perulidae, the Canada warbler was assigned to the genus Wilsonia, along with the hooded and Wilson's warbler. However, via DNA analyses, the hooded warbler was found to be closer to the American red star resulting in Wilsonia being paraphyletic, and so it was dissolved, with the hooded warbler being placed in Cetophaga, along with the previous Dendroica warblers, such as the Blackburnian warbler. You can watch that video here. While the Wilsons and Canada warblers were moved to the genus Cardolina. Within Perulidae, Cardolina appears sister to Myoborus, which are the white starts. Within Cardolina, the Canada warbler is sister to the rest of the genus, being the basal offshoot. I observed this male Canada warbler throughout the breeding season in Ontario this year, every time singing away in the same area. Canada warblers are an incredibly interesting species. Until next time on Animal Analysis.